Hi everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. This is Clarice Lim. Today, I'm going to go through with you P4 signs, heat and temperature. Okay, the objective of this video is to give you a very concise, very straightforward keywords, topical keywords that you will need to know in order to excel in your test paper. A lot of students don't know how to fill in section B, short answer questions because they always think the answer is very obvious but they get zero from the answer that they have given. Why is that so? Because keywords are missing. So this video aims to give you the keywords that you need to use in order to score for your exam in science. Okay, let's look at some of the keywords over here. So in heat and temperature, you need to first understand heat is a form of energy. Okay, so it is an energy, it is non-matter. You cannot see it, but you can feel it. Okay, so it is heat travels from a hotter place to a colder place. It's always hot to cold, hot to cold. This is a key concept you need to remember because sometimes they will ask you questions relating to this. Like for example, they have a candle and then they show you a bar and they have wax on top of the bar. Okay, I'm not sure if you are familiar with that. So the candle is, is burning the bar. So they will ask you, okay, in wax A, B, C, D, like which one drops first? Of course, the ones that's nearer to the bar candle drops first because heat travels from hot to cold. So that's one example question they will ask you. So remember this concept, heat travels from hot to cold. Good conductor of heat, materials that allow heat to pass through easily. So if you want something to cool down very quickly, you don't want it to trap heat, you will want a good conductor of heat. But usually what do we want to do? We want a poor conductor of heat because we want to keep food warm, because we want to keep uh, drinks cold. So these are the things that you will you you will want a poor conductor of heat for, right? So poor conductor of heat doesn't allow the light to pass through. So you don't want the doesn't want the heat for uh doesn't want the heat to pass through. Did I say light? <laughs> okay. So heat. So if you don't want it to cool down, you don't want the heat from the surrounding to go into the cold water. Therefore, you want a poor conductor of heat to contain the cold water. So if it's something hot, like for example the food, you want the food to be kept warm. So you don't want the heat from inside of the food to come out into the surrounding, to heat up the surrounding. It doesn't, you don't want that to happen. Therefore, you want a poor conductor of heat to contain your food. So in that sense, both ends, poor conductor of heat is actually very useful in our daily lives. So what are the good conductor of heat? For example, metal, ceramic, cooking pots, needs to allow heat to flow through quickly in order to cook food, right? That's why metal is a good um, material to use for your pots and pans. But if you're talking about poor conductor of heat, you want to contain the temperature of the uh, items that you have. You will want to use plastic, wool, styrofoam, air, a layer of air. Okay, so for example, in the winter countries, you want to keep heat inside the house. You want to have two layers of glass and then air in the middle of the two layers of glass for your window. Because the glass will conduct heat, right? However, the air in the middle of this two layer of glass will prevent heat exchange. Okay, so it prevents the heat from inside the house to go through because air is a poor conductor of heat, the other side of the window. You don't want heat to escape. Therefore, usually they'll have a layer of air at cold countries for their window to prevent heat from escaping, right? So air is a bad conductor of heat. Um, big light, another kind of material that prevents heat from uh, escaping. Rubber feathers, right? So lunchbox, for example, handle of cooking pots, jackets. These are things that you will use uh, materials that is poor conductor of heat to, to make. Anything that helps keep warm or anything that prevents melting, okay? So these are the, the, the materials that you will use. So sources of heat is anything that gives out heat of its own. Everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. I'm Clarice Lim. Today, I'm going to touch on P4 topic, heat and temperature. Okay, so P4 science, heat and temperature. Remember, this video's objective is to give you the concise, the very straightforward keywords that you need in order to answer your exam questions, in order to score well for section B, the short answer questions. Because a lot of students, they usually know the answer, but by the time they write an answer, they realize that, hey, they didn't get a single marks for it. Why is that so? Even though they are able to explain, but 
they still don't get the keywords correct. So this video will actually highlight to you exactly what are the keywords that you should use in order to score points for your exam. Okay, so let's start. Heat and temperature. The first thing you need to know, heat is a form of energy. It is non-matter. You cannot see it, but you can feel it, right? So heat travels from a hotter place to a colder place. Why is this important? Because this is used in order to answer a lot of science exam questions, like for example, this one over here. So they will give you a metal rod. They will tell you all this A, B, and C is stuck to the metal rod using wax. Wax melts with heat. Am I right? So given this concept, heat travels from a hotter to a colder place. If there is a heat source from here at Y, over here, okay, at the end, at this end of the metal rod at Y. So if the heat source is here, heat will travel from here, the colder place, to the hotter, uh, the hotter place, to the colder place, correct? So it will travel from here downwards in a straight line all the way to the colder place because heat will always travel from hot to cold. So which of this thumbtack will melt first? Or rather, which of this thumbtack will drop first? C will drop first, followed by B, followed by A. That's why you need to understand how do you explain this kind of question. Heat travels from hot to cold. So there are good conductors of heat. There is also poor conductors of heat. Okay, Good conductor of heat meaning heat can travel in and out between the material easily. So for example, like we want to cook some stuff, we will want to use a material that is a good conductor of heat because, for example, the pot will heat up much faster, our food will cook much faster. But after cooking, what do we want? We want to maintain the temperature inside the food, correct? So we will need to have a poor conductor of heat to contain the food so that there is no energy exchange. The heat does not escape from the bowl. The bowl keeps the heat inside so that we can eat warm food, right? So this is the usage of good conductor of heat to cook faster, poor conductor of heat to maintain heat in the food. Sometimes it can also be used to maintain the cold temperature of the drink, for example. So you need a poor conductor of heat to maintain temperature in the drink. Why is that so? Because there is heat in the environment and the drink is colder than the heat from the environment. So the heat from the environment, if it's a good conductor of heat, the, the material that contains the cold water will allow the heat from outside to enter this cold drink, therefore warming it up. Okay, but if you have a poor conductor of heat, the heat from the surrounding will not be able to touch or rather will not be able to enter or affect the temperature of the cold water that quickly, therefore maintaining the cool temperature of the water inside the container. That is when you will want a poor conductor of heat material for a cold drink. Okay, because materials like that doesn't allow heat to pass through. So for example, plastic, wool, styrofoam, air, big like leather, rubber, okay, and feathers. So this, uh, this in these materials are usually used for lunchbox, handle of cooking pots because you don't want the cooking pots handle to be so hot you can't hold them anymore, isn't it? So uh, jackets they prevent uh, exchange, and you notice that those jackets with a uh, uh, fluffiness with thick layer of uh, air inside it actually keeps you warm as well because air is a poor conductor of heat. In winter country, they also have windows made of two layers of glass, but in between, they have a layer of air. Why is that so? Because air is a poor conductor of heat. It doesn't allow the heat from inside the house to escape as quickly, okay, as compared to when there's no layer of air. Okay, so by, by trapping the layer of air within the glass windows, the two pieces of glass for the window, you actually prevent or lower the rate of heat escaping from the house, right? Sources of heat, anything that gives out heat on its own, for example, fire, oven, light bulb, sun, of course, the most natural one will be the sun, and others are man-made. So temperature is a measurement of heat. Uh, melting point, melting ice is 0 degrees Celsius, so this is a temperature, temperature measures heat. So at 0 degrees Celsius, there is very, very low amount of heat. Boiling water is 100 degrees Celsius, uh, a lot of heat. Thermometers are used to measure temperature. There's two types of thermometer. There is the laboratory thermometer measures all the way to 100 or 110, 120. It depends on what kind you buy. Usually they use alcohol. Okay, so there is a bulb that contains the mass of the alcohol as it touches hot surface. This alcohol will expand and shoot this level upwards in order for you to tell the temperature. 
So this level, this thin thread over here is called a thread. Okay, for clinical thermometer, it usually measures up to 43 degrees Celsius, sometimes 44, but by the time your fever reaches that temperature, you're most likely dead already, delirious or something. Okay, so clinical thermometer usually has a limit of 44 or 43. They use mercury. So you need to differentiate these two types of thermometer. Thermometer laboratory goes up to 100 or 110, 112, 120. Clinical thermometer reaches only up to 43, 44. They use mercury. Okay, there is a band here so that if you take out the thermometer from your mouth, it does not shoot back down all the way. The band actually prevents the mercury from shooting back down so that you have time to check the temperature of your body. Okay, by the time you are done checking, you will shake it for the mercury to go back into the bulb. Okay, because the band is there, it prevents movement. So, but when you shake it, you give it a little force, you are allowing the mercury to flow back then. So, uh, when you're talking about cold stuff, we're talking about it being having low heat. Not that it's no heat, but it's low heat. When it's becoming cooler, in order to explain the fact that anything is becoming cooler, you are saying that it is losing heat. If you just leave your answer as become cooler, you will not get the keyword, you will not get an answer. You will not get the points for that question. You need to say lose heat. Anything that's hot has got high heat, it is becoming hotter, means it is gaining heat. So the keyword is gaining heat, losing heat. If it's becoming hotter, becoming cooler, no marks, right? Need to be very, very scientific, very, very specific in addressing the heat. Let's look at some questions. Tim wanted to find out how the size of ice cubes affect the temperature of water. So he placed a large ice cube in one and small ice cubes in another. Okay, so one large ice cube, one small ice cube. In each beaker, both have the same amount of water, both is at the room temperature. So the only difference in this experiment is that one beaker got big ice cubes, one beaker got small ice cubes. So he recorded the time for the temperature of water in each beaker to reach 20 degrees Celsius, he measured one time, 15 degrees Celsius, he measured again, 10 degrees Celsius, he measures again. So and he realized this is the, t the, the setup. Setup X. Uh, took 20 seconds, uh, took 90 seconds to reach 20 degrees Celsius, 240 seconds to reach 15, 280 to reach 10. Experimental Y took relatively less time, which means it cools down faster. Based on the table above, state which experimental setup, X or Y, contained the large ice cube. Very obvious answer, Y. Okay, why do I say very obvious? Because why cool down much faster? Okay, so if it cooled down much faster, it must be because it has a huge ice cube, isn't it? So the huge ice cube. So how do you explain that answer? So experimental setup Y contained the larger ice cube because the temperature of the water reached took a shorter time than experimental setup X to reach 10 degrees Celsius. Right? So because of the shorter time, that's how you explain. So <clears throat> they just are they are just asking you which one contained the large ice cube and you have to explain why you think so because this one drove faster. So then what is the relationship between the size of the ice cube placed in the beaker and the amount of heat lost by the water in the beaker? So what is the relationship? The relationship is that the larger the something, the smaller the something, that's relationship. So how do you explain? So the larger the ice cube, the greater the amount of heat loss from the water, thus the water, the faster the water cool. Okay? In short, the larger the ice cube, the faster the water cool. So what are the keywords? The keywords will be here, the larger, okay, the faster. And don't forget, the heat loss. The heat loss is a very important keyword. Without this heat loss, your relationship will not be valid. You will not get any marks, right? So heat loss, very important. Another question. Ahmad used an instrument to measure the temperature of cold water in a glass, okay? So what is the temperature over here? What is this instrument here? They didn't show you the final, right? But if you can, you can assume that by 20 over here, uh, this one will be uh, about 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So any instrument that measures up to 100, you will call it a laboratory thermometer, right? That will be the exact answer. If you write uh, it's just thermometer, some schools might say no, okay? Some teachers might give you, okay, it's just a thermometer, that's fine. 
um, but it really depends on the strictness of the school. What is the temperature of the water in the glass? So you have to read, you know how to read scales, right? P3, you already know how to read scales. So this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 over here. So this answer is therefore 14 degrees Celsius, all right? So next question. Glass A contained water with a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. Glass B contained a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. So, very common question. You add two different temperature of water into one container. What is the final temperature of that water inside? Very simple. <clears throat> it will be in between, right? So, 80 is the high one. 40 is the low one. You mix them together. They will meet in between, right? So, 80 plus 40, 120 divided by 2, 60. Between 80 and 40, the in-between is 60 degrees Celsius. So, <clears throat> what would be the likely temperature of water in beaker Y at first and 60 minutes later? So, you note that the question says she carried out this experiment at a room temperature of 28 degrees Celsius. So, the temperature of the water will not remain at 60 for too long because it will lose heat. Right? It doesn't say what material this is, but you will assume that it will lose heat. You can see through, right? So it's most likely glass. Glass is not exactly a very good conductor of heat. Therefore, it will lose heat. <clears throat> it's a good conductor of heat, I'm sorry. It will lose heat and therefore reaching 28 degrees Celsius room temperature 60 minutes later. That will be some of the assumptions that you will make for this kind of question, right? Okay, so how do you answer? So straight away this one, at first it will reach 60 because uh, of the measurement. So degree Celsius, let's just have this unit over here. And uh, 60 minutes later, it will be 28 degrees Celsius, reaching room temperature. So how do you explain that then? Very simple, you will need certain keywords. Let me highlight the keywords to you. The keywords will be, the heat will travel from the higher temperature to the water with lower temperature. So the traveling of heat, you have to state, right? So heat travels, right? Heat flows from high temperature to low temperature until it reaches an equilibrium, a balance, right? If you can't spell equilibrium, use balance, it's okay. Then it continues to lose heat one hour later, right? So it continues to lose heat and become the same temperature as the room or lose heat and uh, reaches temperature of the surroundings also can. So this part, this is another keyword that you need, room temperature. Okay, so this is how you explain. So heat flows from high to low until it reaches equilibrium and then continue to lose heat because it cool down. You cannot say cool down, cool down, no marks. You need to say lose heat. Okay, lose heat until when? Lose heat until room temperature, another keyword. Right? So this is how you answer this kind of question. Susie put four ice cubes, this, this little rectangular uh, shape over here is the ice cube in four separate dishes. She covered each one of them using a different material. Ten over here, A is left empty, not covered. So P, Q and R are different uh, materials. She recorded how long it took for each ice cube to melt, okay, as shown. So over here, P took five minutes to melt. Q took 23 minutes before it melted. So this one is a poor conductor of heat, isn't it? It did not allow the temperature, the heat from the surrounding to enter, to pass through the material, therefore melting the ice. So that, that's why the ice took so long before it melts, right? 15 in between, right? So over here, you're supposed to fill in this one, <clears throat> write down the time for the ice cube to melt, okay? So you just accordingly, so over here, what is the lowest over here? The one will be the lowest will be P, all right? Followed by Q on top and then R over here. So this will be how it looks like. Compare material R with material P and Q, okay? So R is in the middle, all right? So how would you explain that? So R is a uh, comparing as a conductor of heat, right? So R is a poorer conductor of heat compared to P, okay? Because R is actually able to keep the, the coolness inside. It did not allow the, uh, the heat to travel as fast, but it is a better conductor of heat. It allowed heat to escape compared to Q, right? Because Q kept it uh, uh, cold for a much longer time. So this is how you explain, okay? That it is a poorer conductor of heat, <clears throat> keyword, than P, 
uh, but a better conductor of heat than Q, keyword. Okay, conductor of heat is the keyword in this question. This is how you explain. Mr. Tan carried out the following experiment in a room. He filled two beakers A and B with the same amount of tap water. So he added the same amount of ice into each beaker. So same amount of water, same number of ice. They measured the temperature of the water after 10 minutes. So the only thing that is different will be the materials of the beaker. Beaker A, temperature of water 25. Beaker B, temperature of water 18. So you put ice, you expect the temperature to be cold. Am I right? So the temperature in beaker B is cold, colder than A. What does that tell you? Material B definitely is a poor conductor of heat. It maintained the temperature of coolness, isn't it? So Mr. Tan selected B to keep his drink warm. Did he make the right choice? Is it the same thing if you want to keep things cool or if you want to keep things warm, do you choose the same kind of material? Yes, you do. Because basically, to keep things warm or to keep things cool, you do not want heat to travel, either from outside to inside or inside out, right? So you do not want heat to travel, therefore you need a poor conductor of heat. And B is definitely one, because B managed to keep the water cool. If it keeps the water cool, it will be able to keep the water warm. Okay, so did he make the right choice? Yes, he made the right choice. How would you explain his answer? Okay, you, you explain his answer using heat transfer. So heat flow, he made the right choice, number one, so that is the correct answer, okay? So bigger B is a poor conductor of heat than bigger A because it does not allow heat to travel, right? So you need to explain that bigger B is a poor conductor of heat. Keyword, because it does not allow heat to flow. Keyword, right? Thus, keeping the water cooler than in A. Therefore, if you want to continue, therefore, if you were to choose B to keep his drink warm, heat will not escape that fast since the material is a poor conductor of heat. That will be a full, lengthy, complete answer. Then Mr. Tan conducted another experiment and put different amounts of hot water at 50 degrees Celsius in A and in B. You see, both water is the same temperature, different quantity, that's all. So Mr. Tan said, the water in both beakers are the same temperature and same amount of heat. Oops, he's only partly correct. What is wrong? Same temperature, of course, is correct, right? Temperature is measured, it is 50 degrees Celsius, but is it the same amount of heat? No, it is not. It has the same temperature, but there is more heat in B over in A over here. Why is that so? Because it's a higher volume. Higher volume, higher amount of energy. Because it's 50 degrees of 50 degrees Celsius of energy over here, but this is 150 degrees Celsius of energy over here. A lot more. So the volume actually makes the heat bigger, okay, stronger. Right, so water in both beakers is the same temperature, but A has more heat than B. Okay, I hope you've gotten the keywords for this topic. Okay, make sure you use the keywords for every single question so that you can score very well for section B. Please click subscribe and be notified of our videos. See you soon. Bye bye.